Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back once again. My name is Jordan, also known as J Monster, and today I've got another Silmarillion battle for you. It's going to be a four versus four on the Blood Bowl? Blood Basin. Yeah, that's the one. I actually made this map, so you think I could get the name right at least. I made it ages and ages ago. It's a little private map for some clan battles, but it's actually been ported in Silmarillion so that now everybody can enjoy it. Uh, but let's take a look at some of the army comps here and then get into the battle itself. Guardian Realm of Doriath is the first armor we're going to look at today, being played by uh, Captain Gervais. Unsurprising to see him playing as the Sindar. This is, in fact, his favorite faction. Uh, he definitely knows how to play them. So, one, two units, I believe, of the Shield Bears of Regia. And this is going to be a full unit of them. Um, I don't know if we have any other attachments on the, on the field today, but speaking of attachments, we do have the Rangers of the Girdle. One, two units of them. These are basically the only dedicated archer unit that Doriath has available to them, and they are detachment size. Doriath being much more of a melee focused faction, uh, they do have some other archer esque units, but they're more of a hybrid that run out of ammunition quite quickly. So if you are looking for a little bit of uh, ranged harass, yeah, this is really your, your go to for Doriath. Uh, over here we have the Tier N Lysdanin, which is going to be the legendary company for Doriath. Legendary companies, for those unfamiliar with the concept, are sort of an extra piece to the toolkit that normally. Uh, fall with the, outside the purview of that faction specialization. So one of the things that Doriath doesn't really have a whole lot of is javelin units. I will like dedicate an actual like harassment hunter javelin units, but they do have the tier in the lights done in to kind of fill that up, fill that gap a little bit. Uh, they have armor piercing throwing axes, armor piercing in melee as well, which is quite uncommon for axe units. And uh, they're relatively capable, much more lightly armored than uh, than the regular X-Men, and I think their charge bonus is also a little bit lower as well. So there are, uh, there's actually less of them in addition, and they're quite expensive. So there are some major drawbacks to bringing this unit, but when you see what he's actually playing against today, it's going to make a lot of sense why he'd want to uh, include those in the army. Looks like we have some Shield Bears of Regian Detachments. These are really nice for screening out your second line, your back lines, uh, just trying to keep cavalry out of them. And since Feanor is on the field today, it's not going to be a bad choice at all. Wardens of the Girdle here. These are one of the aforementioned hybrid bow units. I think they've got about five or so ammunition. And once that's expended, you want to commit them to melee post haste as they are quite light, but they do pack a wallop for sure. Uh, unit here of the Warriors of Regian. One thing to note is that two-handed axes no longer have armor piercing, you know, axes in general, except in the case of the Tyr and Lysthanen, but they're kind of special, so don't worry about it. Um, but they are very good at... Uh, uh, dealing with chaff, and in the case of the two-handed units, they can actually be extremely deadly to cavalry off the charge, strangely enough. Assuming, of course, that they can get in there and connect with that charge animation before the cavalry is able to disengage. So, a little bit of a polyvalent unit there, can do a few different things. Uh, more Wardens of the Girdle in the back here, got some Axemen of the Girdle as well. These are light axe units, but they're, but they're also axe throwers, which can be particularly handy. Um, some Axe Guard of Regian here. This is going to be the one-handed variant, the counterpart, I suppose, to the uh, Warriors of Regian. Excellent, excellent chaff grinders. And they've got fairly high, it's like on the higher end, but it's not super, super high uh, melee damage as well, so they can deal with armor to a fairly limited extent. Uh, back here, we've got some more Shield Bears of Regian, so a good amount of spears on the field today. Uh, more Rangers of the Girdle, it looks like that's one... Two? Just two units? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely two. Uh, more Axe Guard hanging out over here, and it looks like they might be being brought to the aid of his allies. We've got some Donath and Mablung as well, which I believe is going to be... No, it's actually not the General Bodyguard today. You can actually see uh, Mablung himself hanging out here with his, the men who bear his namesake, Elves, I suppose. Uh, Two-handed Maces, so they're very good at crushing armor, which is going to be extremely useful against Feanor. And then top it all off. Got some more Axemen up here. And some Kuthalim, which are armor-piercing bowmen. And this is going to be where the general's hanging out. A little bit bold to put Thingol in a unit that's going to be on the front lines like this. Uh, but we'll see how that works out for him. It looks like these guys won't be sporting any of their uh, fancy upgrades, armor, and so forth. But nonetheless, very terrifying opponent. As I mentioned, they do have armor-piercing arrows. But they've also got, I believe they still have it, uh, the Relentless trait, which means that they cannot be stunned or staggered, which means they're always on and always hitting you, and it can be very fearsome indeed. Not a lot of cavalry here. It looks like Rex has opted to go for more of a 
more of a, obviously a foot-based approach, but uh, having a lot of spears and things like that to try and uh, and zone out Feanor. So he's not going to have a lot of mobility, which is... Well, we'll see how it works out. Moving on now to his ally, we have the Realm of Dor Quarthol being played by Nifredir, the Shadow Hunter. He's got some scouts of the two captains. These are, I believe, Harassment Javelin um, Melee Cavalry Hybrids, because you know how we love our Javelin units in Silmarillion. I've got some Lancers of the Two Captain here, which are a detachment variant of those Melee Cav, but they are Lancers. And they've got the infamous Smoke Bombs, which are going to be very interesting on the, on the field today since it's already so smoky and foggy. But Smoke Bombs can be very useful because they, uh, they actually trap units within them, assuming they are not Cavalry and do not have the Relentless trait, which we talked about earlier. Um, they actually trap units inside of them within a sort of a stagger loop. So it can be very useful for disabling units, not really doing damage, but... Because it disables them, it does make them easy prey for these very swift light lancers to launch charges. So it's a really cool synergy. Super proud of that unit uh, in concept. Anyway, moving on over here, we have some brigands of Dorquarthal. These are going to be mace infantry. A little bit of light infantry to, to mix it up. Dorquarthal is one of our, I think, two or three light infantry factions, and they can do very, very well for themselves. Raiders of Dorquarthal over here. Going to be a throwing axe um, infantry sort of hybrid, similar to the... Uh, the Doriath Axeman that we looked at earlier. Now in front, we've got some Guardsmen of the Two Captains. Pretty easy to figure out what they're about. Light Spears, they do what Light Spears do. Um, some Huntsmen of the Two Captains. These are actually going to be a detachment of, uh, of Hunter Javelins. So very good at dealing with heavy armor, uh, beasts, and so forth. So we got, it looks like, two units of them here today as well. Um, out front, Huntmasters of the Great Bow. These are actually an armor-piercing two-handed axe. I know, I just got finished telling you how axes don't really have that anymore. There are some exceptions, but the general rule is that 95%, let's say, of, uh, of axemen follow that rule. But uh, yeah, these guys are another exception. Huntsmasters, potentially very scary. Uh, very limited, obviously, by their lack of shield, lack of armor, and their low numbers. They're also quite expensive, so you need to be careful with how you use these, but they can absolutely throw down and turn the tide of the game if you let them. Foragers of Dor Quarthel. We've got some light infantry um, spear bow hybrids. They're going to have a little bit less range than some of the other Dor Quarthel archers, but they will, of course, have the infamous poison arrows, which are now working fine and proper. We've got some of the uh, the Drogathery. I still, I will never say this word correctly, but I think it means like the hunting hounds or something like that. This is the legendary company for Dor Quarthel. And they are very good at uh, fighting cavalry, fighting monsters, things like that. They've got some really strong bonuses, which is something potentially that Dor Quarthol can kind of struggle with. Uh, especially like, you know, heavily armored skirmish cavalry. There aren't, you know, necessarily a ton of ways for them to deal with these. Uh, and monsters in particular can be a really scary thing for Dor Quarthol. So, Dorgath 3 fill that niche quite nicely. They're also very quick. So, yeah, be careful. Be aware of that. Uh, here we ha have the old company of the House of Ran Ransom. These are actually uh, like an AP poison arrow. So we're just, you know, throwing out all the effects there. Um, I believe they are medium infantry armed with axes. They also have the uh, shield. So they are going to be a little bit lower on range than other units who don't have that. And this is going to be where the general is hanging out today. So you can see the whole gang is here. We've got Turambar. We've got Beleg. We've actually got Mim. So many people have asked for petty dwarves, and this is... Probably as much as you're gonna see of them, and then we've got the uh, the generic general model in the back there as well. Uh, wow, he's got a big army, eh? Uh, some forges of Dorquartho. I've already seen them. More Huntsmasters of the Great Bow, Guardsmen of the Two Captains, and a big core here of the Fearmongers. These guys are really interesting. So similar to the smoke bomb we talked about earlier, they actually have a flash bomb, uh, and it will do the stagger effect, but it does it uh, to much much lesser of a magnitude. And it also can do a little bit of damage, and I think it affects morale as well. So it's a nice little way to just, like, because Dork Quarthel is generally quite skirmish-heavy, just throw these out, gives you an extra couple of seconds to maybe line up another shot or two. Uh, nothing terribly game-changing, but it certainly can be useful and synergizes quite nicely with their faction specialties. More scouts of the two captains here. More brigands of Dork Quarthel armed with their maces. Got some more raiders there as well. Lots and lots of skirmish and mid-range things to play around with. And then finally, we've got a second company here 
of the Lancers of the Two Captains. Whoa, I thought that army would never end. Moving on now, we have another human faction. We actually have the Edine of, uh, of Brethel, otherwise known as the House of Haleth. Panther of Barsoom is piloting them today. And we've got one, two, some uh, Ulfidin mixed in there as well. Some scary berserkers. Ooh, it's going to be nasty. One, two, I believe, three, one, two, three, four units of the Swearder Brother of Brethil. They're actually really nice. I mean, swordmen generally don't do a ton, a ton of damage uh, unless there's like a big quality disparity. Uh, but they have excellent defensive stats, big numbers, as you can see. Probably one of the larger uh, human uh, line units that are available. They've got good uh, defensive stats, good armor, melee defense, etc., etc. They do what you want them to do. And there's a second company of Ulfidin mixed in there as well. So potentially, this is a very scary front line. There's like two areas here that they might be poised, poised for a breakthrough depending on what their opponents bring to bear. Supporting that big old mass of armored humanity, we've got Huskarlar of Brethil. One, two, three units of them. They're going to function as a second line. So as gaps begin to form in here, it's actually not a bad idea to have a big old line of Huskarlar they can really punish people with those throwing axes, uh, which are very disruptive and potentially quite damaging depending on the target. Uh, but yeah, one, two, three units of the Hoskarlar. Looks like we've got some Darwartha in the back here, which is going to be the General's bodyguard. And indeed, the General will be hanging out here today. You can see that Haleth General with his big horns. Really cool model that I think the uh, COE team gave us, so big thanks to Reaper for that. And I don't see any Cav here, which is really interesting. Okay, we do have a little bit of cav. Um, I'll talk about why that would be interesting, depending on whether or not we have more cavalry in the future here. More wins of Malduin, which I think is maybe one of the first times we've actually seen this uh, this unit on, on the field, on the channel, that we've actually like showcased it. Uh, they're kind of obscenely overpowered right now. They might have, you know, one too many models in there, but it's fine, don't worry about it. Shh. There'll be a hotfix at some point, I'm sure. Um, but very, very brutal. But unlike the other Paladin Chariot, these have a huge, huge penalty against cavalry. I think it's like minus 10 or something obscene like that. So the uh, the Warwinds of Maldwin, very good at what they do. Uh, they do have an armor-piercing charge, and they've got uh, some little, what are they called? The Marjorot of Maldwin. Hence, uh, whence cometh their name. And uh, they're a nice little harassment javelin. So very good at preying upon infantry. Uh, about 6 or so HP per model. Like I said, very strong unit at this point. Uh, one, two units of the Dismounted Wall Trider Dragoons. These are a uh, dismounted variant of the uh, melee cavalry, actually. And they've got a little bit better kind of bow stats, but they're not quite as good in, uh, in CQB, but there are, of course, more of them. Uh, another unit here of basically dismounted cavalry. We've got some dismounted Mordrot of Maldwin. And it looks like uh, Warda of Brethel hanging out here as well. So, yeah, not a lot of cav. Uh, another unit of the Warda. So couple hidden units of these light spears here. They actually have um, uh, armor piercing, which can make them very strong against cavalry. So lots of energy has really been ex expended here to, to, to counter cavalry and to counter large units. So we'll see if that's actually a worthwhile investment. But yeah, it's a bit strange not to see the cavalry because that's, I mean, they're some of the best units that the Hal Haladin have. Uh, really strong mobility. They kind of pair that with like some good missile utility. And overall, those are units that I, we've seen on the channel win games time and time again, or at the very least keep them very close. Um, so a little bit of a different approach today. Yeah, I'm into it. Let's see how it goes. Moving on here to the final member of the blue team. Oh, we made it. And then we just have the red team to go. Uh, we have the Avari of Tower M. Duina being played by Tundra's Fox. We've got Bow Wards here, Light Spearmen. They actually have some nice little extra bonuses against, uh, against cavalry because the Avari, of course, have no cavalry of their own. So they need to compensate for that in other ways. Uh, they're also very quick, and I think they get a little bit of extra melee defense from some specialty that I can't quite remember, but is sort of vaguely floating around in the ether in my brain. Um, but one, two units here of Bow Ward spread out right across that front line. And then behind them, we've got one, two units of Moss Stalkers. Actually, a third unit of Moss Stalkers here. What do you know? Four. Four Moss Stalkers. Blah, blah, blah. It's an Avari Skirmish Army. That's wild. Uh, not something you see very often. Skirmish heavy. I won't say it's a skirmish army. They can't really do that. And then finally, we've got stone hewers here. All along the line, these are some uh, quite efficient axe infantry. They're, I think, sort of on the upper end of, of light, but I guess apparently they're medium now. 
Uh, and they're one of the few units that I, I think... I think they can still get an armor upgrade. I could be wrong about that, though. Uh, but they can be a very, very efficient unit. They're also reasonably priced, so you can upgrade them with you know, attack upgrades, chevrons, all that good stuff. It's looking like one, two, three, four, possibly five units of stone heroes today. Uh, some hidden units of branch stalkers of the Great Sea. More smoke bombs. What are they playing at here? All of this uh, industrial fog across the battlefield, and now we're throwing uh, smoke bombs into the mix. Like I said, very chaotic game. Two units of those uh, branch stalkers. They're also a nice little uh, kind of anti infantry chaff grinder after the fact. Uh, more bow wards hanging out back here. Two more units of bow wards and the shades of the garden path. But it looks like the general's not in here. And if he's not here, then where is he? Perhaps. Oh, another unit of bow wards. Yes, the second unit of shades of the garden path. And indeed, this is where the general's going to be hanging out. So, very mid tier heavy. Um, and I'm not seeing any of the. Uh, the Thorncasters, which is, again, a bit of a departure from the normative behavior of the average uh, Summerlian player. The Thorncasters are very, very strong, uh, and they also bring a little bit of uh, AP utility, since technically they use the Mace Profile. But, again, let's see how it goes. It's fun to see people experiment with new stuff. Uh, across the field here, we have the Lord of Belagost, who's playing, of course, the Elves of the Falas, as he always seems to do. Uh, two units of Scouts, Brithombar, one, two, right there. This is a... Uh, Obviously, it's a bow cavalry unit, and it's a light one at that. Um, yeah, it's one of the new additions to the uh, to the patch, and um, yeah, they basically do exactly what you'd expect them to do. Uh, and he's got some marksmen of Balar on the front here, so some heavy kind of Noldor units. These are a classic; they've probably been in since Falas was uh, was a, a faction. Uh, one, two units of the marksmen of Balar. They're heavy. Uh, Heavy archers, and uh, yeah, they can throw down at range. They've got some pretty decent numbers as well. Usually, Noldor units are around 100, uh, but the Falas have some some little uh, tricks and, and things that they do at the faction level that uh, allows them to increase that number a little bit. Got some Marines of Eglarest here. One, two, three, four. My god. That is a lot of Hunter Javelins. Um, yeah, potentially a lot, of, uh, a lot of damage that can be done here. Although, if you're bringing four of them, you're probably not, and you're also bringing two units of the Marks on Baylor, you probably don't have a whole lot else uh, that's really, truly damaging. So, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of the Falas' hopes and dreams wrapped up on this unit here. And then two units of Catapult. This is going to be, this is a weird army. There's like, you know, once the missiles and stuff have been expended, there's not really a lot of damage in here. Uh, two units of the Seafarers of Brithombar, they do have some maces, which are, you know, not too bad. Um, Marines of Brithombar as well, Harassment Javelins, little light swordsman after the fact. And, oof, Ronkir Lin, two units of heavy uh, heavy infantry. One of the like really good heavy infantry units in the game, but can't, again, sword units don't have the highest damage. And then, finally, you have the Mariners of Erendil, which, as we've seen, have some interesting projectiles. Uh, potentially have some, some very strong uses, especially against a lot of the skirmish that's across there. Like, this is a unit that you can use to kind of lock down skirmishers and uh, protect yourself or protect your allies on their approach. Moving on now, we have Angband being played by Revan of Korriban, who I haven't seen play the mod in quite some time. Uh, Spear Guard of the Iron Crown here, one looks like two units of them, and yeah, weird compositions here. I'm not seeing a single halberd, which is very strange for, uh, for Angband. Uh, one or two units of fully upgraded Iron Shod Legionnaires. Got some Tormentors of the Iron Crown as well with their maces. And, oh man, wow. It's a chaotic mess of little black soldiers out here. Uh, one, two, three units of Arbalists. Looks like one full unit and, no, oh, actually three full units. I've uh, got some Iron Drakes, which, interesting pick. Uh, usually I see these paired with like trolls or something disruptive that can like you know, create blobs and then the Iron Drakes can kind of fire into them. So it'll be interesting to see what he does with them because uh, if you're going to be fighting in lines as Angband, it's a little bit harder to find a good uh, a good firing arc for those units. Uh, over here we have the Scourges of Gothmog. This is actually the legendary company for Angband. A little bit, actually significantly lighter. I think they're more of like a medium infantry. Yes, indeed they are. And uh, they've got some really high melee defense and damage values. It's one of the few units in the Angban roster outside, like, the Bulldogs and Balrogs and whatever that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Elves. So, yeah. 
uh, more Iron Shot Legionnaires here, but I think that's just those units extending all the way to the back because they are quite large. We've got a bunch of Reavers of Unfoundlith, which, worth noting, this is a desert map. So if you're going to play an army like this as Angband, this is kind of the place to do it. Desert maps do give some pretty significant uh, terrain bonuses to Orc units in particular. So they're going to be running around here with like an extra two or so damage, which, yeah, got to be aware of that for sure. That's a big, big net buff across the whole army. Moving on now, we have the House of Engulfin, piloted by Remy Plays, Blades of Baradithal, uh, sort of the Immaculate Line Infantry unit. No, uh, no upgrades on them today, which is interesting. Uh, second unit there of the Bladesmen. Got some Harumatar, which is uh, sort of a, an elite detachment, if you were, but they are still 1 HP. Whole bunch of Herdsmen of Hithlam. Uh, this unit has actually changed a lot from the last patch. It used to be that they were two-handed axes, but since we have, well, I've, I've said it, but then I showed you two exceptions to that rule. Uh, Axis have lost AP. So because Fingolfin actually needed some AP, and it's really important in the new patch, uh, they are now Macemen. Macemen with a shield. And you get a whole whack of them here. One, two, three units of. Got some Dragon Guard in the back here. Sons of Hurin's very heavily leaning into Edine today. And two, is it? Yep, two Lancers of Anonim Galuth. And then we've got the Arquani Finicano as well, which is actually the legendary company. A beautiful little model here made for us by Castellan of Angmar. Uh, Armor-piercing horse archers, sort of the, the unit that fought Glaurung uh, and, and drove him back into the depths of Angban when he emerged prematurely when he was yet young and fragile. A uh, whole bunch of marines of Vinyamar here, one, two, three. As I mentioned, it's more of a hybrid unit. They do have some hunter javelins, but only two. Uh, instead of the regular, I think it's four or five in even some exceptional cases. And they're also medium infantry that you can throw into the fray and expect to do reasonably well after the fact. Uh, actually, four units of the Marines of Vinyamar. Uh, again, a wild composition here. No pikes, none of the like traditional kind of thing, golf and stuff. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Uh, popping on over to the fourth and final red team player. Yes, thank you for bearing with me uh, through all of that. Um, we actually have the, uh, the House of Feanor, and it's worth noting that these kind of classic models we've had in since the beginning, they're actually going away uh, relatively soon. We had just got some new assets, and I think we're going to be redoing a lot of them. So enjoy them whilst you can. In any case, House of Feanor being played by Alexios. He's got one, two, three. Do I have four? No, just three units of the shield bears there. Really nice kind of medium spear. They can actually upgrade to be essentially heavy, as can many units within the Feanor roster, that being one of their big specialties. One, two units of catapults here. So damn, a lot of catapults on the field, eh? Two here, two on the other end with Belagost. This is going to be quite the, the fireworks display. Two units of that, Rangers of Helleborn as well. One, two, nice little medium infantry you can really throw down after the fact. They are also armed with hunter javelins. So plenty of hunter javelins on the uh, on the other side. Some really damaging core of like we have like four with file well, S two here. A uh, whole bunch of the Marines of Vinyamar. Yeah, a lot of jab power. Otto and Mighty Mounts is going to be, I believe, the general's bodyguard. He's going to be hanging out here. Um, yeah, they're exactly what you'd expect them to be. But now the really impressive stuff. Requeni Magloro, probably the best. Actually, no, I'm just going to go ahead and never say it. It's the best cavalry unit in the game. Uh, they are only 1 HP, but they have really high defensive uh, defensive uh, chops. And they can also upgrade that a little bit more. And since they're a bodyguard, they actually do that for quite cheaply. So you're going to see these guys almost all the time, I think, in a field. Uh, although not necessarily all the time. There are some... They are very expensive. I think they're like 22, 2300, which is a lot. Uh, I've also got two units of the Haunters of Caligorm as well, which are not, you know, inexpensive themselves. They are heavy lancers, and these guys can absolutely throw down in the new patch. Mount Company as well to support the rest of them. Yeah, a nice little cavalry force here, though not as much as you'd expect from Feanor. I'm, lo I'm loving the, the weird comps. Uh, one, two, three units here of the Stalkers of Thargelion. And now I'm going to give you another exception, and this one is an exception that actually dates back to like the first patch we ever had. These guys have armor piercing as well. Let me tell you why. Uh, House of Feanor does not have a lot of AP outside of some missiles and the Roquetti Magloro and Lancer charges. Uh, and they really struggle against heavily armored units like Dwarves and Angband and things like that. So this is actually uh, the solution we came up with is you know, allowing these kind of lighter units 
to, uh, to have that extra armor piercing so that uh, Feanor does have some, albeit limited answers. Light infantry, not the sturdiest thing in the world, and they can fall apart quite quickly. Let me move on over here. Uh, the same holds true for the detachment unit of the Stalkers. But instead of Precursor Javelins, which is just extra damage, don't do anything special, not really specialized to do one thing or the other, we have Harassment Javelins, which is what these guys are going to be. So one unit of Harass Javs right there. And then we get into the real meat and potatoes. Defenders of Aglon, Accursed of Aqualande, Legendary Company for the House of Fanor. I think we've all seen what they're about at this point, but I'll say it one more time just for the people in the back. Uh, this is a relentless sort of variant of the Defenders of Aglon here. Way, way more armor, but a lot less melee defense. Uh, so they can really throw down uh, in melee. They're absolute blender lords, and you can, I'm sure we've seen it on the channel a dozen times. Um, but they are extremely vulnerable to armor piercing, even more so than the rest of the heavily armored Feanor roster. Uh, even relatively light lancers can get a ton of value, kill you know the majority of this unit with you know one maybe two charges. So something you want to be very careful with. You can't upgrade their armor, but again, that really just exacerbates the efficiency of armor piercing against them. So hunter javelins, things like that, can be completely brutal against the Accursed of Avalonde. Uh, Defenders of Aglon over here as well. They're two-handed elven swordsmen. Reliable, sturdy, heavily armored, and damn, do they hurt bad. So let's go ahead and finally get this started here. And uh, it kicks off with a little bit of a bang. We can see the uh, House of Feanor here loading up those catapults, getting ready to, uh, to open up and unleash their fury upon poor Rex here, who doesn't really have any, any options. I mean, Doriath can take catapults, but he has opted not to take them today. And uh, Dorkwarthal doesn't have any artillery that I can think of. And neither does the Yavari outside of the, the, the Grandfather. And I believe that uh, the House of Halath only has a, uh, a Ballista. So this is gonna be, this is gonna be very, I, I think, at least at this early stage in the game, it's gonna be relatively one-sided in favor of the uh, of the red team, at least in the skirmish phase. Oh, the poor Axe Guard of Region here, really feeling the wrath of those catapults. And I think maybe some of the poor legendary company got it bad as well. Nope, they have not. Rex looking like maybe wants to move forward, be super aggressive. I wouldn't blame him given the amount of artillery ranged against him, but also he's got a big advantage in, uh, in foot numbers, so he could probably overwhelm. Ah, there they are. Poor guys getting targeted down the tier and lies down and meeting an ignoble death at the ends of those uh, of those catapults there, uh, firing their, their flaming rocks of doom, scything through. Eh, about a few, probably about five or six of them. And yeah, as I was saying, this might not be a bad situation to just kind of spin to win, rush forward, and come what may. That being said, Alexios has parked himself quite uh, quite close to his ally, and the House of Engulfing would certainly be able to intervene. So Rex is in a little bit of a positional bind here, I would say. Like, he can push forward, and I'd say he can definitely beat Fingolfin's infantry, but he probably can't beat, uh, did I say Fingolfin? Feanor's infantry but he definitely can't beat Fingolfin at the same time. And his only ally is more of a, a skirmish kind of light based faction who likes to do a little bit of damage at range before they get in there. So poor little Rexy on the end. We'll see how things go for him. Uh, moving on over here, it looks like Angban is really just going for it. And I think that needs to be the thumbnail of this video. That is damn cool. And uh, let's see, looks like Angban being kind of rebuffed here first wave of Iron Shot Legionnaires not doing too great. Uh, maybe some... Oh, actually managed to affect a little bit of a breakthrough here, which is surprising. I should probably turn this down. A lot's happening so fast. Uh, the War Winds of Malduin able to kind of clean this up, hopefully plug this gap and staunch the bleeding, but Angben has more than enough to throw in, in there. And looks like they actually have Bulldogs as a general's bodyguard here as well. Unfortunately, I missed those earlier. Uh, some flash bombs going off in the face of these Iron Shot Legionnaires. You can see them getting staggered a little bit. Looks like some of the, oh yeah, the Lancers of the two captains are here as well. Tossing those smoke bombs in, making sure that Revan of Korriban is not really able to move through this area with his almost entirely infantry-based army. Uh, so this is a nice little area denial th thing here that's kind of giving the uh, the Haladin and uh, Dork Warthel as well a little bit of a stay of execution, allow them to, uh, to throw some more more javies, more arrows, and just do what they can. Kind of thin things out in here. Oh my god. 
That is that is a nightmare. Uh, more artillery fire coming in here. It looks like from the Philothrum position. Let's see what they're gonna get. Oof. A little bit of friendly fire, but you know everyone's kind of feeling their out there. Dork Quarthol has now moved in to try and support the Halden. Oh, some nasty artillery shots here. Absolutely brutal. Scything through friend and foe alike. Like I said, brutal chaotic. And now some of that smoke wafts over here onto the battlefield. And uh, Angband trying to break through again with some of the spear guard of the Iron Crown. A little bit reduced though, and I think the Huskarlar of Breath will probably have something to say about that. It's looking like they've definitely got some more ammunition here. So if Panthan sees it, he'll be able to target these guys down. And indeed, here it comes. Let's see if they're gonna get it. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, he's tossing at someone else instead. Oh, nasty going after those bulldogs there. Not gonna kill any of them. They are multiple, ooh, kills one. Multiple HP. It looks like there's uh, the Warwinds of Mulduin actually in the back lines here. Kind of s trying to sell their lives dearly. I'm not sure that I really agree with this. Uh, they are in here cutting through people like you wouldn't believe. Ooh, yeah, the Arbalist really feeling their wrath, but uh, I thought they were going to rout there for a minute. Oh, and indeed, they still might. Losing them would be... This would be very, very bad. And as he gets more bogged down and gets surrounded, uh, there is a very strong possibility here that these Warwains of Mulduin are going to fall apart. Reaver's now tossing Javis and stuff in, and these guys are beginning to fall. Oh, bad news bears here. And wait for it. I feel like they're going to rout any moment here. They are doing a decent amount of damage to the Arbalist, though. you got to hand it to them. I'm trying to carve out the heart of the Angban army. A very bold charge here. But I don't think they're, they've really got too much left. More and more Javis. More of these guys beginning to fall. And that's probably going to be the end for them. And indeed, they are going to route off here. So, was it worth it? I mean, it seems like they carved a trail of destruction through here. But... I don't think it really did what he wanted him to do, and Angband certainly has the numbers to spare. Now the Philothrum have moved in here to support their ally in their assault on the kind of combined man position here in the center. Uh, Iron Drake's not really anything for them to shoot at. Again, it's hard to get the, uh, the firing solution that's optimal when you don't have trolls and other big disruptive units. Uh, Seafarers of Prathombar really feeling the wrath of... I'm not entirely sure who. Darwartha dumping their shots and they're not sure that's the most efficient use uh, now this wound this like artery here in the middle of their line oh and down goes Rex's general sniped from afar it's actually slowed down just a little bit more um, yeah this artery has kind of opened up again and now it's just gonna bleed forth orcish infantry as a revenant of Corban gets to move through here uh, looks like maybe the iron shots changed their mind a little bit uh, who's shooting at him Oh, it's the old company taking pot shots uh, into the rear of those Iron Shot Legionaries. The Philothrum now moving into position to, you know, maybe punch through here and begin to roll up this line. And things are not going well down here on the front. You can see the Swearder Brother now beginning to fall away, being crushed under the weight of those Macemen, which is absolutely the thing to do if you're Angband and facing a bit, down a big line of Swearder Brother for when you're AP units, and they're going to do just fine. If your monitors have been brought forward, but those swords, I think, are going to have a hard time hacking their way through that serrated plate mail. Let's pop on over to this side. Looks like things are going down. The Philothrum being harassed by somebody's smoke bombs. Probably the Branch Stalkers. Yeah, again, the Branch Stalkers are relentless, so they can take advantage of, this, of the chaos that they cause with this. Um, arrows pouring in. It's hard to tell who's winning, although it says the that the Warda are, are kind of struggling a little bit here against the Aramkir Lim. But that being said, Lots of support being lent by their allies, and now a bunch of dismounted Walsh Riders charging down the hill into the fray. And I think that the Iran Kirlim here are going to be overwhelmed in a fairly short order. Uh, lots of missile damage as well from the Avari, and looks like some more help from the uh, the uh, Men of Brethel over here as well. And you can just see a big pile of dead Philothrum elves who would never, never again return home to their beautiful seaside uh, abodes. Marines of Eglaris being brought forward to kind of answer a little bit. Uh, looks like the Avari have been they've been busy, but they've been thinned out a little bit. But they have managed to silence the catapult nest here. Nice move from Hunter's Fox. That should relieve a little bit of the pressure on uh, on the center there, where uh, Nifredir and Panthan are doing the best to hold the line. Moss Stalkers now being brought back, probably having used a significant amount of ammunition to try and cut through many of the lightly armored Philothrum and a bit of a sally here. Uh, Stone Hewers. They got something to save the Marines of Eclorest, and it looks like they haven't even used their ammunition either. 
So, really nice move here from Tundra's Fox going to uh, potentially rip the heart out of some really important units here for the Philothrum. If you look here, oh, looks like they're doing pretty well. The red team have uh, have really taken quite a lot of casualties, but of an 8% difference there. So let's see if they can keep up that pressure and, uh, and see this through the end. Marines of Aethlerus now being tied up in combat. Uh, Iron Drake's being peppered down, but they're heavy enough that they're probably not going to notice too much. Oh man, the chaos over here. The Flothrum bringing forward their general unit. Revan filtering in some more uh, reinforcements. Lots of Reavers of Anthoglith here. Marines of Aeglarest. Ooh, they got something to say. And who is it to? Oh, the Dower War. The sad, sad day indeed. Some really important kind of linchpin unit here. And Panthan wants to hang on to them for, I think, as long as he can. Dismounted Mardrot of Malduin. Taking shots here in, probably into the Bulldogs as it looks like the Men of Brethel are being pushed back ever so slightly, uh, but not without making uh, Angband and their allies pay for every inch in blood. Uh, more troops now uh, punching through a, a hole in the lines, and what do they have to, to answer here? We got some smoke bombs, that'll uh, slow them down a little bit. Uh, Dork Barthol uh, Raiders do not do not have Relentless, so everyone's just gonna kind of be thrown into Bedlam here. Uh, this is not a bad opportunity for those Lancers to be activated. There's a big old kind of hole here uh, that they could uh, potentially potentially sew shut again with one or two nicely placed charges. So let's see what they're going to be able to do. Uh, looks like we've got some Guardsmen here being brought forward to try and deal with Fingolfin, who's now joined the fray in the center. Uh, they've actually uh, come up with quite a substantial contingent here. Lots of Marines of Inumar. That's kind of looking like the blue team's lines here are going to buckle in the center in fairly short order. Now, they do have a decent amount of reserves, um, and Nifredir has the rest of his army over here, but it's kind of coming down to a skeleton crew. Like, Nifredir has really committed into uh, into the center here to try and help Panthan hold the line. Now they've got a third red team player in here. I'm not sure how long they're going to be able to hold that for. Uh, what have we got? Got some Lancers of the two captains here. Ooh, this could be a beautiful, beautiful charge. Oh, but the Marines of Vinyamar are going to absolutely evaporate that unit. I think maybe he'll get one or two kills. Oh, that was so unfortunate. It was nicely lined up. Uh, definitely had the right idea, but Remy plays told uh, Nifredir exactly what he thought about that. And down, indeed, they go. Uh, still lots of cav, though, left here for, uh, for Nifredir. Another unit of the Lancers uh, could be used, potentially. Smash into some of these Marines of Inumar. Um, and then over here, it looks like Rex and Alex are kind of just having a little bit of a standoff. Uh, Rex now moving forward to take this position, but I think a lot of support has actually been drawn off already for the House of Feanor. Now, it's entirely... Diff it's very difficult to tell. Oh, man. Well, what is this? What's happening over here? Well, it's probably the, uh, the Falas unit. Yes, indeed it is being very, very disruptive, and honestly, not a bad idea, especially going to follow it up with a nice charge from the Requenny Magloro. And, uh, but yeah, that House of Feanor support over here, which, this could be really decisive. Uh, he's kind of well poised here to get into the middle, right into the heart of the Avari army, and indeed, that's their general right there. This could be so bad. Looks like they're going to get a nice charge here into the shades of the guarded path. And the shades are probably going to evaporate there under the weight of that chart. Absolutely. They're going to carry forth into the general's bodyguard, and he's in there somewhere. Ooh, some more disruption over here, throwing the Avari into chaos. Another nice big shot here, and that might be enough, I think, to maybe lock down this unit here. And this will continue for quite a while, or normally it should. got going on back here. Looks like Fingolfin, or not Fingolfin, Falas, another one of their uh, heavy infantry units being cleaned up here by some nice teamwork. Fari Branch Stalkers getting into the rear. That's going to be all she wrote for them, but the the Falathrum, they've got something to say. And down goes the Avari General. A brutal charge there from the Requeni. They did exactly what they came here to do, and they've basically done it with impunity. Now, some of the stone hewers might get in there, might kill maybe one or two of them. But this would be a, a, a nice time to have Rangers. Uh, Rangers of the Hidden Path, the, absolutely the bane of a unit like this. Because there's no counters in the area, nothing locally, the Roquendi Maglaro are just going to run roughshod, I think, over the poor uh, the poor Avari, who were doing so well up to this point. 
Down goes the Haladin General, so we're going to pop back over there in just a moment. Uh, but yeah, we'll come back here and, and check and see how the, the Avari are doing. So it looks like the red team's starting to bring it back a little bit. And this apocalyptic center fight here, looks like Angband's going to be able to take it. Uh, scouts with the two captains charging in here against the Reavers. They're actually not going to do too bad being axe-armed cavalry. They certainly have uh, enough damage to overwhelm the meager defenses of this Orcish infantry. Another big charge here into a second unit of Reavers. Gonna net these guys probably a few hundred kills in fairly short order if they keep at it. Down goes the Angband General. The center here having seen the demise of two generals from either side. It looks like they are gonna be able to take it. Old Company of the House of Ransom have been committed. And that I believe is his bodyguard, unless he had a second one that I didn't notice. Think Golfin has now moved in, and they're just overwhelming what remains of Dork Barthel. Dork Barthel still putting up a good fight here. Oh, some brigands in the back being absolutely annihilated by the dragon guards at throwing axes. And one more volley here ought to be enough to do it. Here it goes. And off they go. Brutal, brutal shot. Brigands going to try and get on top of those drag guard, dragon guard, trying to rally. But yeah, they're just being evaporated there by those throwing axes. Meanwhile, over here, Huntmaster is being brought forth to face the Sons of Hurin, which... Probably will trade relatively evenly, to be perfectly honest. There's so much damage on both of these units that uh, I think if they got a nice clean charge off, they, they might be able to basically go even with them. Oh no, the Fala, the Falathrum coming in with those Horse Archers. Smashing into the rear of the Hunts Masters, and they're not going to have a chance to show their quality. And they're going to be seen off in fairly short order. Uh, a couple more Nifidir's units still over here, so all hope is not lost. Rex has now begun to clash with the Fanor Infantry. And things are going okay-ish so far. He does have a lot of like mid-range missiles that he needs to uh, to leverage in order to cut through the heavy armor values of this faction. But he has silenced the artillery finally. Donathan Mablong being brought forward. Lots of wards at the girdle here fighting some defenders. And he seems to be doing fairly well. Let's see what the Tyrion Lyston and are going to go after here. Uh, something I'm sure we'll see in a moment. Uh, shield bearers and stuff clashing with the... Shield bears from the opposite side. Lots of, of bearers of shields. Looks like they're trying to get a piece of the uh, of the defenders of Aglon, but there's not really a great great firing solution for them there. Wardens of the Girdle probably going to take some shots over here. The Accursed, the Accursed hacking their way through the Axe Guard of Region, which is kind of unsurprising. Uh, they are more of a medium infantry unit, so two chaff grinders here. We know what happens when the Unstoppable Force meets another Unstoppable Force. <laughs> One of them be certainly becomes stoppable, and that is going to be the Axe Guard of Regian here today. But lots of uh, lots of units here that could uh, be brought to bear against this big pocket of Feanor, uh, Feanor infantry. Lots of missile units in particular. Uh, Ogdorn Mightymo, quite heavily reduced, probably down to about half there. Ooh, Rangers of Hellborn smashing into these guys. Actually, they're going after the Donathan Mablong, which is a great target for them. Two units of them, focus firing. They'll probably delete this unit very have or at least very heavily reduce its effectiveness throughout the course of the game. So Feanor being overwhelmed, as one would expect, but uh, giving almost as good as they take. Another big volley here. Oh, that's so painful. So many of those um, Donathan and Blunt guardsmen are going to die. Down they go, indeed. One unit being silenced by the Axemen of the Girdle. Getting a very clean charge here into the front of these Rangers of Hellborn. They will cut them down in a fairly short order. Warriors of Region charging into the rear of the Rangers of Hellborn. Let's see if they get... Oh, yeah, they're not going to get that last volley off. So Rex managing to preserve the health of his Donathan Mablon. Oh, a few went down range. Okay, not so bad. And now I think these Rangers of Hellborn are going to get deleted in fairly short order. Uh, defenders clapping back over here. Rangers of the Girdle, not really what you'd want to send. Looks like the Axemen of the Girdle here are going to be lining up for some brutal shots. So we're going to come back here in just a moment. Looks like the rest of the Fanor Cav here has got themselves, uh, maybe gotten a little bit too big for their boots here. Their Cav is good, but it's not that good. It's not crush your way through two units of Spearmen good. Uh, over here, the Roquini Magloro have now been heavily reduced from when we saw them before. Taking about two-thirds or so casualties. Yeah, I'm sure we have the Huntsmen of the two Captains to thank for that, as well as the intervention of some of this cavalry here. And the Rokhani Magloro slowly being cut down. Drogathri have been uh, 
have been activated as well. And if they get on top of the Requiting Magloro, it's all over but the Cryon. But it doesn't look like maybe that's what they're going for here. Certainly a good idea. Or maybe they're trying to cut off any option of retreat here from the Requiting Magloro. Um, what do we got going on over here? It looks like Dwarf Barthol has managed to clean up the enemy forces that were sent against them uh, over on this end, with the exception perhaps of the Requiting Magloro. Got a nice little charge there. Dorgathri going to try and get in to uh, maybe cut off their retreat. Spearmen charging forward, and I don't know how much longer the Roquini are going to be for this world, especially that the Dragathri managed to get on top of them. Uh, Marines of Inyamar, though, looks like still have ammunition. No, actually, they just ran out. Now they're moving into support, but I think uh, Nifrindir has what it takes to to deal with what's on his end of the field, at least over there. Uh, in the center, now they have taken it, but man, at what cost? Look at that. Overwhelmed though they were. Nifredir and his ally Panthan really put up a heroic struggle here and uh, certainly bled the enemy. Probably have a good, I would guess, about 50% of their army probably died here. Now they're pushing through. They're trying to clean up the remnants of Panthan's army. He's still got some things that can put up a fight uh, with the dismounted Mardrot. Uh, probably not too long for this world. They've got some Huskarlar in there. I think maybe I saw some dismounted uh, units as well. The Avari, at least what's left of them, Branch Stalkers charging into the remains of the Philothrum. Uh, Tundra's Fox determined to sell his his life dearly here. Looks like some scouts overrunning the back. He's not doing too bad. The Requiny Maglar weren't able to clean him up in their entirety, and he's still got a decent amount of the Moss Stalkers, so it's worth mentioning. Do have maces. Stone Hewers haven't been routed. Orda as well. It's, it's about even probably favoring the red team, though. Yeah, catapults in the back there have been silenced. There's a whole unit of uh, Bow Wardens there that probably could be used to try and and, uh, and zone out this light cavalry here. Moss Stalker's doing what they can. And the Shades going toe-to-toe -to -toe with two units infantry. Oh, no. Hunters of Caligorum in here, they're gonna absolutely flatten the branch stalkers. That fear kicking into effect and sending the uh, the Abaran elves scurrying. Yeah, again, not a lot of uh, answers to the to the heavy cav. Even though they are getting shot in the back here, they're not gonna take too much damage from that. One or two will fall there. Smelted wall riders. Yeah, I knew there was still some left. But this is mostly a cleanup operation in the center for sure. But the real question is, because they are so close, will the blue team be able to inflict enough damage here? They have done marvelously. You gotta hand it to them. But will they be able to inflict enough damage here in order to give... I think Rex is gonna win that fight. So in order to give Rex the chance that he needs, will they be able to uh, to bring down enough of their enemies? I'm not sure. Iron Shot Arbol is still in the field. Uh, looks like more of those hunters are still kicking about. Dora Quarthol doing what they can. Requiting Maglora is somehow still alive. Huntsman giving, uh, giving the business here to the Marines of Inumar. Drogathri going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Fingolfin, but Fingolfin is back in kind of renewed numbers, and Dark Warthol is being surrounded and overwhelmed. They are not very long for this world, but Nifredir is going to do what he can. Thin out these units where still possible. Now it's a company of Himring charging forward after it looks like routing some of Rex's troops. Pop on over to this side, and it's still kind of hanging in the balance. So, oh, it's like dead even now. And the uh, the blue team was off to such a good start, almost 10% ahead. Nice moves here, Donathan LeBlanc charging into the rear of these uh, shield bears of Helleborn. So it looks like Rex is probably going to start to clean things up here. Oof, nasty. Kuthalim doing very well against the Otorn Mighty Mel. Looks like maybe the Rangers of Helleborn managed to pop off a volley before Rex was able to get on top of them. They might even get another one if they're in defensive stance. Let's see if they can do it. Oh yeah, here we go. Nice. Nicely done. Defensive stance can be very useful for this reason. Uh, the Kuthalim were once ascendant, now being kind of slowly picked apart, and that's a really unfortunate kind of uh, kind of loss of a unit here. Very bad indeed. 
Rex seeing the issue and trying to get in there and engage as many of these ranged and Hellborn as possible, but I think they're going to be able to delete the Kukulim, which is exactly what they are here to do. Nicely done. Nicely played there by Alexios. Rex responding as best as he's able. Yeah, more shots going off. Rear charges there from a unit of Wardens. It's going to be enough to send these guys routing, but it's too little too late. Kuthalim have basically been destroyed. And now they and the Otron Mighty are essentially going to zero each other out. That being said, Rex still has some options. Got some fairly healthy units still remaining. Most of the Feanor infantry has been cleaned up, but I think... The remaining allies are going to start uh, start regrouping and then rounding on what's left of him. Because there were some units over here from Nifredir who might have been able to help him if they weren't surrounded. So Remy coming in, I think, at the right time here. And really, I think Fingolfin makes up the majority of the things still alive. Yeah, Angband is in a real bad way. They've mostly got some Arbalists left over, which is actually a really big deal at this point in the game. But basically all their infantry, I think, is gone. I got some more Reavers over here. Okay, okay. Decent amount of Reavers. And the Bulldogs are still left, which is quite surprising to me. And a solid amount of Philothrum as well. Now, if it was just Angband and just the Philothrum, I would say that Rex has a pretty solid chance. Oh, you know, some more Tormentors actually managed to make it through the scrum in the center. But with the addition, oh, especially all the Sons of Hurin, I think... I think the tide has turned here against the blue team. Harumatar leading the way. Oh, if Rex, oh, some uh, defenders of Agalon as well, still present. If Rex is maybe able to get in there, strike first kind of thing, uh, possibility of uh, maybe being able to defeat the these armies in detail, because they're not exactly, uh, they didn't wait for each other to, to kind of go in as a group. But it doesn't look like he's in a position to do that, unfortunately. Uh, still trying to get his own troops together as well. Understandable. Iron Shot Arbalist here. Maybe going to pop off a volley before someone manages to get him. I think I would expect they go for the Tyrion Lice Donnan, but I think they might just be going for whatever they can get. Just firing off into the mass. Probably going to hit. Who knows? Bam. Some of those wardens going to get on top of them. One guy gets punched in the back of the head and swiftly dispatched. Defenders charging in to the uh, shield bearers. They're quite tired. I think fatigue is going to be a really big factor in this here. If Rex can maybe form up on the hill, make people fight him uphill, um, he's got a chance, a very slim one, but a chance nonetheless. Big charge there from the Axemen of the Girdle right into the Reavers. I would expect them to evaporate very, very quickly here, especially since Hangman doesn't have their general. Yeah. More Reavers being brought forth, and they're being met by the Tyrion Lysdanen, but this kind of wing here is a little bit weak, and I think Korriban's going to be able to probably surround him in his entirety. Uh, that being said, there are some reserves in the center that could be brought forward to stop that from happening. Uh, Reavers getting a nice charge there into the Tyrion Lysdanen, and they're going to do their best. Oh, yeah, those Axemen, I think, managed to deal with those, uh, those guys there. Bulldogs being brought forward, Axemen of the Girdle pursuing... So they are actually going to run through here and uh, maybe get themselves into a little bit of an awkward position. So we could see that very healthy unit of Axemen just evaporate uh, for not a whole lot of gain. There's a lot of pressure here. Uh, yeah, this is definitely a misstep here. They're chasing the Reavers of Unfavolith, which is definitely what they don't want to be doing. Though if they are brought back, they might be able to, uh, to smash into the rear of these troops here. But yeah, they should have been back with the, uh, the Tyrion Lysan. It's a little bit of a critical misstep there on the part of, uh, of Rex with that unit. Shield bears doing what they can. Iron Shot Arbal is being shut down here. Some Feanor Cavalry being brought forward. And is that maybe Kuthalim? It is the Kuthalim. I don't know if they've got ammunition left. They probably don't. Axe Guard of Reggie, I'm going to be able to chase them off. But it looks like a nice little charge of opportunity here. Right into uh, a place that Rex was actually having some success. Oh, terrible. Unfortunate for poor Mr. Gervais. Marines of Inumar now starting to take that fight back. Oh, some of the Feanor Cad will drop there. One or two, maybe. Uh, shield players being brought forward, and they're very much the sort of... The, the anvil of the army, at least of, of what's still remaining. 
Donathan McBlung selling their lives dearly here. Gonna do, no, gonna do uh, quite well against the Marines of Indomar and these uh, depleted Legionnaires. Sons of Hurin smashing into, I'm not entirely sure what. Warns of the Girdle getting a nice charge here into the Marines of Eglarest. What remains of them. And 88 to 92. Yeah, I think this is where we start to see the Doriath resistance kind of crumble. Oh, where's a Region being brought in here? Oh, more of those Marines just firing into the rear of the Shield Bearers, and I think that might be enough to send these guys running as catapult crews crash into them, and more of those Javelins come in, cutting down uh, yet more of their number. Yeah, I think this is where Doriath's will to fight evaporates into thin air. Previous being brought forward. With that being said, you gotta hand it to him. This is like a 3v1 here. He's doing his best. The red team has a lot more they're similar numbers, but, uh, well, they definitely have more. But they also have a lot more economy of action. we got three people who can focus and do different things. All at the same time, where it's just Rex on his own here. Oh, Dragon Guard got smashed into the rear of the Shield Bears, and that's probably going to be all she wrote, I think. Yeah, more troops being brought forward here, and I think these Shield Bears are about done. Yeah. Now with the addition of two units of uh, recording Magloro. Two models, I should say. Off they go. And there's still some Sindar fighting. No, most of them, I, th I think, are going to retreat off the field here. So, pretty brutal. Relatively close, but 8% or so difference, which is interesting because we started with that 8% difference for in favor of the blue team, and now we end with a, a defeat with an 8% difference for the blue team. So, very nicely played on the part of everyone involved here. Um, lots of really experimental comps, which is always nice to see. And, uh, yeah, probably a few things that could have been done differently. I have actually did talk to some of the players who were involved in this, and they told me that they would have liked to see uh, a little bit more reinforcements from the Doriath side of things sent earlier into the center. And I kind of agree with that. Uh, I think if... You know, maybe some of the lighter troops were able to be uh, filtered over there, then that would have been uh, a big deal for sure, uh, especially when it came to just making the blue team pay a little bit more. Uh, and then when it came down to it, unfortunately, uh, Rex was able to dispatch most of the Feanor army. You can see that they were basically dead uh, at the end there. There was like, you know, maybe some defenders and a couple units of, a couple models of Requeni still left over. Um, but it was came, kind of came at the cost of the rest of the team, unfortunately. So I don't I don't know if that would have necessarily changed the game. It would have been really nice to see some uh, counter artillery from the uh, from the green the green team, the blue team side. Uh, that certainly would have gone a long way, I think. Uh, and maybe a little bit more cavalry on their end as well. So maybe it really does come down to composition. But nonetheless, they put up a really good fight. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. My name is Jordan, also known as Jay Monster. I will see you guys next time, and I think it's going to be a siege in the next battle. It'll be a two versus three siege, which I have been told is very good. I haven't actually seen it yet, but soon enough. In any case, thank you, everybody, and I'll see you next time.